gentlemen, I want to put before you our future. So they're right here, and they just have had outstanding accomplishments, and we're very proud of them. Their folks are very proud of them. We want you to be very proud of them. We want to honor them this evening. So I'm going to read a resolution. The Common Council of the City of Scottsburg, resolution number 2023-R-5. A resolution of the City of Scottsburg honoring the Scottsburg High School Jobs for America graduates, JAG students, or as the Jobs for America graduates, JAG program, is state is a state-based national nonprofit organization dedicated to helping high school students of promise to have experienced challenging or traumatic life experiences achieve access, achieve access, uh, success through graduation. Whereas JAG is a resiliency building workforce program that helps students learn and demand employable skills and provides a bridge to post-secondary education and career advancement opportunities. Currently, there are 130 JAG programs available throughout Indiana. Whereas JAG's students receive adult mentoring while in school and one year follow-up counseling after graduation, Indiana's program consistently graduates approximately 95% of participants, and many students choose to continue their education after high school. The JAG program is funded through grants provided by the Indiana Department of Workforce Development. Whereas Scottsburg High School is proud to have a JAG program with many active participants. The Scottsburg JAG participants recently had the opportunity to join more than 800 students from 24 states in Orlando, Florida in April for a fun-filled and action-packed three days at the National Career Association's second National Career Development Conference. Whereas students from JAG programs in 24 states travel to Orlando to, com to compete competitions ranging from business plan creation and public speaking to creative problem solving and interviewing. They also participate in workshops on such topics as dressing for success, and resume writing, and attended two, a two-day career expo. Whereas through the team's hard work and determination, the Scottsburg High School JAG program received national recognition and brought home pride for, them, brought home pride for themselves and the school. Whereas, I'm going to pronounce that. Is it Asia? Asia. Asia? Asia Alcorn. Natasha Williams. So here's, here's Asia Alcorn. Where's Natasha Williams? Right there. Right there. <laughs> and Connor Bartos. Connor Bartos placed fourth in the, nation, in the nation for projected base learning and Christina Owens, where's Christina? Right there. And Christina Owens received an outstanding <coughs> chapter recognition on behalf of Scottsford High School JAG program. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Common Council of the City of Scottsburg, Indiana, as follows. Section one, the City of Scottsburg congratulates the Scottsburg High School JAG program on their accomplishments 2023 and wishes the program participants much success in their future endeavors. Section 2, what <coughs> treasure of the City of Scottsburg shall transmit copies of this resolution to the JAG program coordinator for distribution. Section 3, the resolution shall be effective from and after adoption by this council in compliance with Indiana Code 36-4-6-14. Passed and adopted on this May 22nd 2023 by a vote of, and do we have a motion to pass this resolution? Make the motion. Christian Evans makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll say. Okay. Chris I'll Albertson second. He, am I right here? My left is on the part of the right. Okay. If all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. So it passes by 5 to 0. Oh. And so, can we give our students a round of applause? Yeah. All of them around our students get a picture, can we? And we have certificates for them as well. Okay. Yeah. They're all separate. Let's go around front. Let's go around front. Get our pictures taken with us. And let's hand them out to them. Right. Christina Owens, that's you. Congratulations. 
Absolutely. Ashley Alcorn. Asia. <laughs> I'm sorry, Asia. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Connor. Marzaz, how you? Thank you. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. And Natasha Williams, congratulations. Thank you for all your hard work. Let's, let's all congratulations. Come on down here. Let's all get our pictures. Our folks. Our folks. Right over here. Cheeseburger. <laughs> one, two, three, one more. Okay. All right, I've got one. Hold on, I got one. Okay. Okay. One, two. Okay. Woo! Stop the ice Thank you, thank you, thank you. City limits, yes. yes. Anybody else within the Scottsburg city limits? Yes. So if we're in the county, we can't speak about, if we're, if we're not in the Scottsburg city limits, we can't speak Your about. Your whole thing's going to come up it's later in the, in the agenda. Later, okay. So, so that's, this is, this is, this is an every council thing. We want, if, if you have it, if you want to say something to the council, this is your time to speak about things going on to your city of Scottsburg. Uh, Mr. Mayor, could we give them a little time before we consider the ordinance? right before the ordinance sure, so sure. that they could speak. Absolutely. We have allowed people Absolutely. to speak. Absolutely. Like the last meeting, I believe the gentleman was lived outside the city limits uh, and spoke due to a different thing. So right before the we go to the ordinance, I, I think the citizens of Vianna have a right to, to speak. So, ladies, if this is Rick Manns and he is the president of council. Okay. So, yes, so typically the public comment would be if it's something that's not on the agenda. Right. So if we have the resolutions and the ordinance, um, some other things that come up on business, it'd be something that's not on the agenda. And it would it doesn't have to be someone that's a, a resident of the city. Right. And and we just want to make sure that they realize that you can speak when that comes up. Does that does that help? Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak? Okay, here we go. We'll close our public comment period. Now we'll go on to new business. Our first resolution is 2023 R3, a resolution of the city of Scottsburg adopting a fiscal plan and establishing a definite policy for services. Be read through this. 
Okay, with this, we'll accept the motion to accept resolution 2023-R-3. Make the motion. Here's Evans makes a motion. Is there a second? Second. Chuck Rose seconds. Any questions or comments about this? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. <coughs> the next thing is reading of ordinance 2023-13 and ordinance annexing continuous territory into the city of Scottsburg. Josh, I'm going to hand that down to you. And I'm going to defer to Mr. Duncan here in the front row who's here on behalf of the petitioner. We had the first reading in the public hearing at our last meeting, so this would be action for the second reading and final reading if so desired. Um, if there's any amendments or any changes to the ordinance, now would be the time to make it. And I'll defer to Matt if he's got anything to add. Uh, no, I was just going to recap. We had the public hearing at the last mm -hmm. council meeting. Um, annexation ordinance got adopted on first reading at the last meeting. So if you all do adopt it on second and final reading today, um, our next step then will be to record it with the county recorder, file it with the appropriate local and state offices. And according to our timeline, the annexation will not take effect until January 1, 2025 because all are part of the properties located within a fire protection district. So, that's all I have. And for you who do not know what this is, this is the Christianity property west of Scottsdale. I just want to know what it's at. I'm like you. <laughs> no, I can hear well. I'm just kidding you. Well, well, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, if you're here for Vienna, this is not concerned oh, the Vienna. This but is a whole different in property, right? Correct. This, right. this borders the city limits. Can I ask a question? What's the procedure for annexing in property? Here? So this is a what's called a super voluntary annexation, which is about the only viable annexation allowed under Indiana law. So the property owner has came to the city as requesting to be annexed into the city. So there's a petition that's filed, a public hearing. Uh, an ordinance, a resolution has to be passed. There's publication requirements. Uh, it's about a six, four, five month process on the uh, quick end, even for a super voluntary annexation. Are the people that's included in that annex, are they notified? Well, like I said, this is a voluntary. So the people that own the land are the ones that have requested the annexation. And I'm, I'm the attorney representing the property owner. It's only one piece of property. It's, yeah, it's, it's all contiguous with each other. There's uh, there's two different parcel numbers, but they're right by each other. Owned by the same person. The same mm -hmm. And is it already connected to the city limits? <clears throat> it's connected, yeah. There's a requirement in state law that's got to be a certain amount of contiguous with the existing city. So You cannot. I think we said this at the Planning Commission and there was a misunderstanding. You cannot annex unless oh, you touch that's, this city. That's why I wondered if, if that was the case. So unless we're ordering, you cannot annex. And there, just for clarification, there is a legal description attached to the annexation ordinance that shows the new annexed territory. Can I just ask how many acres it is? 60. It's uh, it's a, it's 58.164 acres. And it's zoned commercial, if I remember right. Is it or industrial? Light industrial, Light industrial. and so yeah. the petitioner is asking for the zoning designation to stay as is. So, does council have any questions for Mr. Duncan? No. Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to go forward and pass Ordinance 2023-13. I'll make a motion. Come on. Chris Alton makes a motion to pass. Is there a second? No second. Bill Holtman seconds. Uh, <laughs> questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you very much. I'll go ahead and make a motion. Third motion to suspend the rules. Uh, Christian Evans on third and final read. Is I'll second. Second by. Uh, Rick Manns, uh, questions, comments? Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> so we can now take the motion to go forward and pass on third and final reading. Is Correct. there a motion to pass on third and final reading? Make a motion. Chuck Rose makes a motion. Is there a second? 
I'll second. Appreciate the seconds. Questions, comments, concerns? No, if you say aye. Aye. Opposed? And thank you very much. Ordinance 2023 to passes on second and third reading. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, Mr. Duncan. Once I get the recorded copy, I'll get Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Hey, Jay, that one will be recorded. Recorded. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, the next thing we have on our agenda this evening is resolution 2023-R-4, a resolution accepting certain street rights away dedicated to the city of Scottsburg. Uh, so where's, where's Josh, where's that? So this is the uh, Timber Meadows, um, or Hidden Meadows, Hidden Meadows. That's just Hidden Meadows, the, uh, all the lots have been sold, the uh, property is almost fully habitated at this point in time. So the earlier roadways within that section have already been adopted by the city I think in 2020. So this is the last little um, jaunt, the road that kind of runs off to the west, I believe, on top of my head. So this is the last street within that division, and uh, it has the dedication language that was on the plat. We just do this as the official step, so it gets recorded, and the county knows to uh, not tax anyone since it's a public roadway, and then for grants to get the uh, paving, this is makes it on our inventory for state purposes. So this this road, this is the last part of that that hidden metal subdivision. Hidden metals is if you go down Cold Lane, where the old pizza used to be, make a left going to there. That had gone back to the bank and developed to purchase that and develop that all out. And then he purchased the lot next to it and built another eleven house. So that's all been sold and completed. So the city is now taking that over and will be put on state inventory. So, uh, you know, so just to give you up to date what's going on there. So we'll accept a motion to go forward with 2023-R-4, uh, uh, accepting this, uh, this district. Is there a motion for this? I'll make a motion. Christian Evans makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Chris Alberts a second. Question, comments, concerns? No, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, that gets reported too. That gets reported. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, can we just move the right. move the agenda and do E and F e and, F. and leave right. D yeah. to the end? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, compliance with statement of benefits, personal property for Scottsburg Solar Array, LLC. Yeah, this is just a, uh, this is the annual certification that's required oh, the by Indiana Code. Something real quick to knock out before we get yeah. to the topic. Yeah. Yes. So it's the uh, action, finding, accepting the uh, compliance statements and authorizing the mayor to execute. So we have a motion to go forward. I'll make that motion. You can do it together. If you want to do it in one motion, that'd be fine. Just approve e and E and F. Yeah. And in one motion, I'll make that motion. This is the Scottsworks Solar Array LLC and Sam Tech. And Sam Tech LLC. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion by Rick Nance. Go forward to the compliance. I'll second. Seconded by Christian Evans. Any questions, comments? If you're done, all favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes there. Okay. Now, we have D, the first reading of Ordinance 2023 15, an ordinance amending the zoning maps. The Unified Zoning Ordinance now in effect for the City of Scottsburg, Indiana. And this is where the blank edit is. So let's open this up for public. I can give a little spiel real quick if you want okay. me to. Um, so Jeff and Jerry Mills are here. They're the owners of the property. Their engineer, Jonathan McCoy, is also here. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to direct them at them, or I could also take some. Um, basically, this is about 32 acres on the corner of Vianna Road and 356. This is coming to you guys um, because of the two-mile fringe you adopted in 2020. So, uh, this does have a favorable recommendation from the Advisory Plan Commission, but it took two meetings to get there, and there were some concerns about density and utilities, um, which would, the utilities would come at a later meeting for ABC. But um, just so you guys know, there will be 24 single family homes built if this is passed and 18 patio homes or duplexes. 
Um, there's also a commercial track and a detention area with green space. So if you guys have any questions, that's all I have. Can you repeat that? 24 single family? 24 single family lots. And 18 duplexes? Yes. And that's everything? Mm -hmm. And commercial. Yeah, there's a commercial tract as well at the front. So in other words, about how much land? Of the 20. Okay, so what? Per house, um, it's a little over. Right. They're engineered here. Yeah, are these going to be rentals? Let's. That's, um, I think if the um, developers want to speak, they can. Let's, let's, let's counsel, ask the developers are addressed. Yeah, do, if the developers have any comments they'd like to make, and then you guys can ask any questions and then turn it over to the turn audience over. would be kind of how we typically do. Terry, I've got a letter from the superintendent of the schools and representing the school board. He couldn't make it tonight. He called me. And if you wouldn't read this, it's, it's any concerns that the schools have about okay. what you're doing. But it does affect the schools very much. So, thank you. Yep. So you want me to read this? Yes, yes. That's from the superintendent. Okay, so this is from Scott County School District 2. First and foremost, Scott County School District 2 wants to be a... wants to coordinate, coordinate, co 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 collaborate, 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 collaborative partner. They would like to be a collaborative partner. In our community's growth. We would never want to make statements that would negatively impact our community's growth. However, who you think is a responsible member of the community to at least share our thoughts about the proposed project. As while it will create opportunity, those opportunities will not come without some challenges. Our three biggest questions are around the anticipated numbers of new students, the timeline of development, and the construction for the new subdivision, and whether we will receive tax revenue in a timeline relative to the new subdivision. This project is not a, a residential TIF project. First, in regard to capacity, Currently, uh, at Viana Finley Elementary School, we are at, we are at or near grade level capacity at each grade level, and annually see an influx of transfer requests from students and families <coughs> that live outside the Viana Finley Elementary Zone of enrollment. Scott Two just reviewed and revised our transfer policy and capacity guidelines for our four elementary schools. Our number, uh, our target numbers, and range per grade level. Are as follows. Uh, okay, grade kindergarten uh, targets 20, range is 16 to 24. First grade target is 20, range is 16 to 24. Second grade 21, range is 17 to 25. Third grade range is 23, our target is 23, range is 19 to 27. Fourth grade, the target is 26, and they're 22 to 30. Fifth grade is 26, and they're 22 to 30. Currently, in Vina Elementary, uh, school uh, for the 2023 and 2024 school year, our enrollment numbers are as follows, with student staff ratios as shown. Kindergarten, 48, 16 to 1. First grade, 65, 21.6 to 1. Second grade, 63, 21 to 1. Third grade, 60, 20 to 1. Fourth grade, 68, 27.7 to 1. Fifth grade, 49, uh, with, with 24.5 to 1. Therefore, we currently have some room for transfers by grade, but it is very limited, especially after the 2023-2024 school year, assuming the, the current numbers hold. Note, Viana Finley Elementary School also offers pre-K program, and currently Viana Finley Elementary School has 407 students enrolled in 2022 and 2023. Scott Two's option, to consider regarding a new subdivision <coughs> close to uh, Viana Finley Elementary School, no particular preference uh, or order at this point in time, uh, is uh, first build an additional classrooms, build additional classrooms on the Viana Finley Elementary School building. We're currently adding two rooms starting this fall and have enough room to likely build four more classrooms at Viana Finley Elementary School before running out of physical footprint at the campus. Two, Consider moving fifth graders from the district to the Scottsburg Middle School and move and move to a middle school format that is fifth and eighth grade, fifth through eighth grade. New Albany and uh, Floyd uh, currently have this one. <coughs> Three, redistrict the zone of enrollment 
boundaries in the district, which would be de designed so that this new subdivision could be part of the Scott uh, Scottsburg Elementary School zone of en enrollment, which would alleviate the student capacity concerns at Vianna Philly Elementary School. Fourth, or any combination of the three above points. Uh, the next available debt capacity for the district would be around 2025 to 26. Scott, too, has always worked hard to be a tax neutral in our board issuances. For complete <coughs> transparency, the 2025-26 bond issuance with this new subdivision and anticipated projects would likely not be tax neutral. In conclusion, we are optimistic about any community growth and will work hard to overcome any challenges that any growth <coughs> anywhere in Scott County would bring to the district. So ladies and gentlemen, that is from Scott County School District 2, presented by School Board Member Rigsell. So, Mayor, could I, could I add one comment there? <clears throat> and, and Rick, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I talked to Dr. Slayton about some of these issues, and the, the comment about moving fifth grade to the middle school was not just Vianna Finley. They were talking about doing that district-wide. In other words, you know, all the elementaries sending fifth graders, and, and that's, just, that's just talk. I mean, it's not anything beyond that right now, but it's a possibility, but it wouldn't be just Vanna Finley, it would be all the elementaries uh, going to the middle school, making that a, a, a five through eight configuration. And they've talked about that before. Right, they have, yeah. Uh, but, but not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what you told me, but I, I just want to make sure everyone understood that. that Yes, that, that's right. And like Mr. Mann said, it would uh, also include building a wing on for the all for right, fifth grade yeah, exactly. to go exactly. there. Yes. Yeah, you're right. In the past five years or so, maybe ten, whatever, uh, school populations has it grown, stayed the same, or declined? Well, Chuck, you can help me out on this. Uh, I'd, I'd say it's about the same. It's it's, it's it's pretty close to this. It's not very very much either direction over the last few years. What's yeah. anticipation? Ten years from now. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's hard to say. Well, you know. the population is pretty well staying about the same, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, Vina Family is a very popular elementary school, and <coughs> we have kids that want to go there. And the way it is right now, they can. Of course, when Chuck and I were in school, if you lived in town, you went in town. If you wanted to go to Vianna, your parents moved to Vianna. But those rules have changed where you can go to any elementary you want, and even high school. Uh, so that's caused an overload of Vianna because it's a very likable school and a lot of kids want to go there. Uh, but as far as making a prediction 10 years down the road, I, I you know, the last few years it's pretty well stayed in the uh, Not up, not down, it's stayed a pretty even. even. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give City Council time to ask any questions to the, the developer door. wanted to speak. I think he wanted to speak. I wish you would. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, you know, the, there's, there's 20 lots that are quarter acre lots. In Can you stand section. up and face us? Because I can't hear you. You might just stand up. Just, over there. Uh, you know, you guys see the layout. There's 20 lots that are quarter acre lots that you know, have the main entrance off of 356. And you can come in. So those, those homes there are in the 16, 1700 square foot. We're looking at the 269 to less than 300. Try to keep under that $300 uh, sale price, 300,000. So that is the 20 houses in there. There's another street that cuts off to the left. That will be duplexes, patio homes is what we're looking at. That more of a, you know, it's it's HOA kind of managed where all the yards and, and all the trash, everything is managed by the company, not by the homeowner or the renter or that stuff. There, but the then there's four additional lots out on 356 that are two plus acres um, that uh, you know bigger homes or you know have more room to build a larger home. So that's and then of course then the commercial area is up more in front. And we have that's right now. John can get into some of the interest of that all coming off of 356. And then we have the retail area in the back there. So um, if you want to come in with some of the utilities or any questions that you have on that stuff. <laughs> <coughs> so yeah, my name is John McCoy. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, my company is JLM Engineering. Um, here on behalf of the owners, the Mills Brothers, uh, you know, we had two really productive meetings with the Planning Commission and the folks here 
uh, from Vienna. Uh, we feel like this is a where we're at now with this draft of the development <coughs> plan uh, is very reasonable as far as density goes and access and safety and, and all those things you look at when you when you develop a you know a residential uh, community like this with some commercial use as well. Um, but, but as far as utilities go, just uh, to give you an idea as far as access, we do, I did speak with the uh, Scott County Regional Sewer District and uh, they did confirm that they have capacity in a line uh, across 356, which will have access to uh, through the right of way of 356 uh, to access that <laughs> line. So, uh, as far as sewers go, and I knew that I know that was a concern early on. Um, so we will have uh, capacity for this development as far as as wastewater goes. Um, water is also available there with uh, Stucker Fork Water is just to the east, um, and the the city has water that comes down from the north as well. So we do have water supply, ample water supply for the development. Uh, as well, um, we did revise the the main entrance, as Jeff mentioned, off of State Road 356. We've centered that on the property. Uh, of course, that NDOT will have to approve that. Um, it, it's a commercial grade, what we call commercial grade entrance. It'll be very wide with with sweeping uh, radiuses, you know, uh, and deceleration lanes to allow traffic to get off of the the highway. Um, it is a 40 mile an hour zone there that goes to a 30 uh, at the school, uh, so that that helps out as far as your you know your site uh, stopping distances and that and that thing that kind of thing when you're uh, dealing with some additional traffic on the roadway uh, that this uh, development would produce. Um, we we we've, we've created a plan that that has lots of green space in it, um, in the 60 to 65% range of total green space area. Uh, up in the northeast corner, if you have a plan in front of you, is a, that is a like a dedicated green space park area also set aside for uh, managing the stormwater off of this site. Um, that will detain, you know, the excess runoff due to the addition of the streets and the homes, um, and we'll control that. Um, that's that's really kind of a summary in a nutshell of the development. I will bring up a few things just because we want to be transparent. There's there are some old uh, gas underground gas tanks up at the intersection of Vienna in 356. Um, the Mills Brothers have. They're uh, in cooperation with uh, River Hills Economic Group. They are uh, working on getting a grant that will allow them to assess those underground tanks uh, with a phase one and phase two environmental assessment. Um, those are all very strictly, those reports and assessments are strictly regulated by EPA. Um, and so those will be reviewed and a determination will be made if those tanks will need to totally come out as well as the soil remediated around those tanks. But they're, they've got the ball rolling uh, as far as taking care of that concern on those buried uh, gas tanks. Um, I did want to mention uh, just a couple bullet points here that's, that's in your comprehensive plan as far as development goes and goals uh, for the area. Um, one is, uh, it's in chapter two of your comprehensive plan, strategy one, bullet note says, that, uh, you know, we desire to encourage residential growth that will increase the population and provide a foundation for future commercial and industrial development. Uh, in strategy two, bullet point states, uh, we want to encourage diverse housing types that accommodates all ages, income levels, and lifestyle. So, you know, we believe with this this proposed development plan that it does accomplish those goals that you've clearly laid out uh, in your comprehensive plan, uh, as far as you know, increasing the population, providing a diverse uh, set of housing um, 
that will allow for different <coughs> ages and income levels uh, in this community. Um, so that's, I think, is, it, is, that, is there anything else that, so if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer any specific questions that you have. Along by Anna Road there, I know there's an existing structure there at the corner of the house and uh, the garage. But going back to the uh, to the north along by Anna Road, is there uh, there's some trees, some growth there currently? Is all that going to remain the same? Is that going to be cleared out, or what's that going to look like? Along I think a lot of that along the right way will be cleared out, yeah, to make it safer, you know, for traffic to be able to see coming out of that property. Uh, no, I'm talking about by Anna Road. That runs to the north, uh, to oh, the west side of Vianna. the property. Well, yeah. you know, we don't have any accesses proposed that connect to Vianna, and that's, it actually provides a buffer, you know, a natural landscape buffer between. <coughs> well, some of that, there's going to be a. I think we'd like to keep, I mean, I don't want to speak. Well, we have talked about, yes, okay. about leaving the buffer zone, especially down the north side, mm -hmm. and then we could do that some in Vianna, but good lots, you know, it'd be the back side of the places. Right. And, and the back side of the two places, too. Right. It would be, you know, face facing the back of it. The only entrance and yes, it's going to be all 356. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And that again, that will have to be in dot approved. That that is, but so we feel like that's the that's the safest and uh, most practical access to the property. I have a couple of questions. <coughs> First of all, you, you said Stucker Fork has service there, so does the city. Do we know who would provide the water? I mean, we're on the north side of that. I, was, I, I, don't, I, was, I, I was assuming. Yeah, yeah, I specifically talked with uh, Randy Needler with Stucker Fork, uh, and he indicated they had a large main just to the east there, like a 12-inch main. Scottsburg, I'm not sure exactly where, where, their, where that service terminates to the north. Um, but Stucker Fork, I know, definitely has the capacity there. Typically, those those areas are dedicated to one or the other. But the, <coughs> the that's what I, I, I just yes. to get my yeah. Answer. Yeah, prepaid electric is also All right, available. That would be through the city. The Scottsburg yes. has more than enough capacity. Yeah, but I, 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 was, I was, was trying to get my head around who provides utilities. Yeah. So you said you yes, one of my questions about. Regional sewer district, they give you the thumbs up if they have the capacity. Not sure about the water, but but the city would provide the electrical service, correct? We do have the electric. We would have the. I always assume the water mm -hmm. uh, there, and yeah, and the Stucker Fork's giving us the affluent the wastewater. Okay. We'll, we'll take that down. Right? Has there uh, has there been any discussion about incentives for infrastructure? That wouldn't apply to us. Okay. Well, I, I mean, if we had some of the utilities, could they? Could they I just was curious. Uh, you, uh, you described the, the different types of housing there. Will, will all these be owner occupied, or will some of these be rental? The, the homes, the single family homes, they're all be sold in, you know, owner, owner occupied. The duplexes, townhomes, that patio home type, that would be we, the company would own them. They would, you would own them, or they'd be managed, whoever that might be. That's, okay. yeah. is, is any of this, I, I mean, obviously the estate homes wouldn't be, but are, are any of these uh, homes uh, subsidized anyway to any subsidized housing in there? Okay. Well, well, this, right, but yeah, just curious. Well, right now, we're looking, you know, trying to keep the budget under 300000 a house, I mean, the 260s, 270s, up to three, and depending on the amenities that we Uh, and, and I guess one other question I had, uh, kind of directed toward the school's letter, that you, you have an idea on the timeline, because apparently that's an issue yeah. for the school. Well, you have an idea on that? A long time now. <laughs> Compared to some of the other neighborhoods around, uh, around here, it would, it's, I don't have nothing, you know, I don't have a detailed plan like that, but I know it would take, uh, it, it take a lot of time just getting the infrastructure design put in, and then you can only sell as many of Buyers are out there, and it, that will take. That's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, we're talking two years or three years, but it it would be that, and perhaps longer. I don't. You know, it's 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 going to be a long time for that ever mature. Would be mature. We're not going to develop the whole thing at one time. That's what you're asking. 
ask. Well, I, I yeah. was just curious. Right. You know, right. 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 Some of these things going pretty quick, and I understand right. yeah. you know, why developers want to do that, but right. I, I just, you know, in of course. to the school did it because I was trying to, trying to alleviate right. some of their concerns. <laughs> do you have a, a plan for, I know some subdivisions have homeowners associations, kind of keeps track of what, how the property's going to be developed, how it's being maintained, yes. three, five years down yes. the road? Yeah, we'll have that, because you know, all the entrance areas, we'll have to manage all that. The green space will be managed in that, as well as the duplexes. But the restrictions on the, when we get deeper into it, as when we sell a new home, there's pretty kind of, we would like to have us. Uh, a lot of a lot of strict standards on on um, you know what's allowed let in the yards and stuff like that. Is that always <laughs> occupied? Is there any subletting that's going to be allowed within that I don't, HOA zone? I no 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 no. no, 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 no. I, get, I didn't hear what you, what you said. You're going to be looking <coughs> only contractors in there to build. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just question. I'm sure the sewer district said they have capacity to be able to handle that. Do we have the capacity to handle that wastewater at the end? At the end? Oh yeah. I mean, we have. Uh, uh, you know, we we yeah. double our, our capacity, and you know we're, we're selling about six hundred thousand gallons of water a day. Taking that probably eight hundred thousand. So we're taking we're taking this through. We have capacity. Third yes. capacity is in a pipe side. Yeah, as I say, the sewer district's capacity is our capacity because they send it all to us. Yeah. yeah. So they have the freedom to say that they can do whatever. Yeah. And, and but we treat it all. Anyways. Yeah. 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 Sorry. If you haven't seen the new sewer plan, it's amazing. So, uh, what other questions do you have for the Bill Brothers or the engineer? Uh, we're going to take. We're going to take you guys just a minute. We're getting. Let's, let's finish with it. Does any uh, council have any more questions of the developers? I, I was just curious. You know, if you, you mentioned commercial property. What do you have any idea what kind of, of commercial? As of right now, we the only thing that we're you know, our knowledge is would be the we'd like RV and bulk storage kind of a you know covered type deal where you, you come right in off that main entrance and it would basically be that would be some of that open space there. You know, fenced and not, not totally enclosed like Mr. North's property on the, the main street there, but that type of uh, setting would go open back to RVs and boats and stuff. Just, would that detract from the property being Well, it help with the things we but uh, that's, that's, you know, we're in the very, very beginning planning stages and just talking about it. Okay. Right. But yes, there ain't going to be nothing uh, I said. Else? I, I don't have a question. I think it, it's more of a statement. And it's just a little bit of an impasse for me personally because I think you can look at it both ways. I know to your comment about the comprehensive plan, the issue with that statement is that comprehensive plan is for the city of Scottsburg. This is not in the city, nor will it ever be in the city. And that's a little bit of the issue that I have in even talking about this today. None of you in this room can vote for any of us. That's just the reality of it. We have a fringe, two mile fringe, that we put forward. So it is our fault that none of you guys can vote for us, that we are voting on this. However, this was not the intended purpose of the two mile fringe. Um, that's kind of just the side effect of it. So again, I don't have a question, uh, but it's more of just a statement. I know similar council members feel the same way, is the two mile fringe, the two mile radius, was not intended to have control over parts of the city that we don't have control over, or have plans to annex in the future. Right, that's not uh, an option here. So whether I agree or disagree with the, the product and the project, um, that's a little bit of my personal impasse on as far as where I stand on it. But I just felt like that was worth stating as we move on to some questions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that statement. Anything else before I open this up for the No, I think we're ready for the okay. oh, so, yeah, okay. Do you have that one? Okay. okay. Um, What's the county commissioners and the county council think of this? Are they in favor of it or they, we, I mean, they don't go before this discussion go before I understand that. I don't know. Bound, I they're bound to have an opinion. I haven't this. heard from any of them. Okay. Have you heard from any of them? Have you guys heard from any of them? 
I have not heard from any of the commissioners or the council. The mayor hasn't heard anything. Okay. Well, I guess, I think, you know. But what I'm saying is, it's like what Christian was saying. Right. They don't. I have the same issue that Christian just said. I think I've said that a couple times. And, but, you know, the, the council and the commissioners had an opportunity to come and speak at two planning commissions. And some of them were there for the But they didn't meeting. speak, really. Right. And they didn't voice an opinion. And yeah, so each we don't of us, know. Our, our numbers are available to call. So I, I don't know that, I guess my issue is the, is the fringe. And, and just, if this was going to be just like all the other developments around Vianna, mm -hmm. it, it'd be a no brainer. Or if this development was right next to the city limits, it'd be a no brainer for me. And I've struggled with this from day one. That just, that's my statement. And I, you guys, I've been very above board with you from the beginning. So, um, but I think it's time to hear from the folks. Okay, folks, the way this is gonna go, we're gonna give you three minutes. I'll time it here. We get three minutes, then uh, we want to have enough time for everybody to speak if you want to speak, okay? So who would like to go first? If you wouldn't mind to state your name as well. Please, go ahead and stand up and state your name. Yes, sir. My name is T.J. Brandenburg. I live directly across from the proposed subdivision from Vianna Road. The gentleman has made changes. He did listen to us. I feel that the board we, pro we proposed to before listened to us. You made changes in traffic that we're very concerned about. You did. You took that off by in a row. You took the one away from my driveway. Thank you, personally. But you created another common sense problem that you're on 356. Now, I'm going to not talk about that because NDOT's going to take care of that. I'll go with their decision, but they're also the folks that came up with all the roundabouts, too. I want to say that, too, so we're aware of that. But we can't vote. We are in limbo on this. We can come, we can complain, and hopefully we can raise concerns, which we did. Sir, I'm still looking for that, that endangered toad over there on Diana. I'm still looking. <laughs> but we had some concerns that we brought up to you, and they were very valid concerns. But I have a question, and it goes right along with what you're saying. Since I have no representation, I have to trust you. And my understanding, and I, don't, I didn't get a nice little packet from the board, and Mr. Mayor, we need to get you a gavel. Your hand's going to be sore when you're doing my time when you're doing this. But it says on this, and I'm assuming that you as a legislative body shall pay reasonable attention to the same five charges that we had before the other council. Is that correct? That it follows a comprehensive plan. It does. I, I won't deny that. Anything could follow a comprehensive plan pretty well as it's written. The current conditions and the character of the existing structures. We all have one acre or more. We got you to move it from the size of the IU basketball court to a quarter of an acre. We did, and you did. But that still doesn't reflect the existing structures there. That is my concern. It also does not address the character of this area. This is a little community. A lady in the council said, well, you'll like the crowd. You can go next door and, and borrow a cup of sugar if you run out. Everybody in here, you going to loan me a cup of sugar if I show up at your door? <laughs> now, Bill Horn sitting here pushes my mower out of the ditch because we don't have good drainage in Vianna. We argued with this engineer till he's probably tired of us. I get my mower stuck because it's wet. But I'm not going to give any more suggestions, ask any more questions except this one. We've told you why we feel we don't want it. We've brought up those situations. I have one question, and I really don't know who to address it to. So I'm going to address it to you, sir, in good faith, and I'm going to put it before the mayor and anybody else. We've talked about what's in it for you. Obviously, you got to get your money back. Some of us have been against you. We couldn't afford it. I wanted to put a geriatric farm there so people with memory loss could come and farm. We could grow pumpkins for the school. I didn't have enough money to do it. One of the gentlemen the other night said he wanted something creative, and he said you were creative. With all due respect, sir, it's a subdivision. It's a high-density subdivision. It's not creative. 
But my question for you, or anybody else, what does it do for Vienna? I know what it does for extra housing, but I can drive out here in my car, I'll take you with me, and we can find apartments, we can find a duplex, we can find houses pretty quickly. What does it do for those of us who love Vienna? And I'll take my question and cede my time. Thank you. Oh, you're four minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody answer me, please. Not everybody wants. I'm a school teacher. Who's, who's I can that? take who's questions. That? Who's that? Yes, sir. Yes, I've tried to evaluate everything. Give us your name. Give us your name. Yeah, give us your name. Okay. Uh, Tom Craig. Yes, Tom Craig. <coughs> you guys did a great job. I would have done it the same way that they did. I would come in and ask for a thousand new homes. Okay, we'll take it down to 100 and then everybody will be happy. I agree completely with what she said. The character of this neighborhood, I would have been okay at one acre per residence. They came in and asked a whole lot more and we thought, oh, we made some gains with them. I think it's okay now. We're still not down to one acre per residence. And, you know, and as far as trusting what they say in here verbally, I was here also when they bid on the property. Everybody asked me, well, what are you going to do with that? Because all of us wanted the property for our own reason. Well, I think I'm going to build a house in the middle. You know, I've always wanted plenty of land around me, and that's why I bought it. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> so I don't trust anything they, they tell me anymore. If it's not on paper, then you can hold it to them. Hold it to them. As far as their price targets, who knows what the price targets they're going to have. We don't know what the market's going to be. We don't know what house, kind of house we're going to build. So, again, I wouldn't trust them as far as I could throw them. Um, but again, the character of the neighborhood is what I'm concerned about. I live about three tenths of a mile from, from this big development. And it certainly wouldn't do me any favors if they have all those rentals in there and um, lack of control of who comes in and who leaves. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Tom. Who's next? Please. Give us your name first. Patricia Burna, can you help me through this? Yes. And um, what else you want? That's good. Okay. I walked that area of mushrooming and it's very wet. And she spoke to just the general wetness of the area. You start putting uh, high density uh, houses close together and you're really going to increase the drainage. <coughs> With any rain, when you drive down 356, a little bit past the school, you see the ditches are full, logs are floating out, the ditch along 31 is full and flooding. And I really think it's going to be quite a water drainage problem just because there must be natural springs there. It's going to be a massive <coughs> problem with the water. Secondary, second thing is with the railroad tracks and the school. And you have going to work traffic that's going to be increased from this development. You're really going to have a boondoggle, I think, because they stop traffic to let the school buses in and out, which they should stop traffic for the railroad <coughs> tracks, for the trains. So I'm concerned about <laughs> traffic issues. And you mentioned something about a two-mile radius. I, didn't, I don't know what that means mile radius around the, the post area. Not the proposed area. So two, there was an ordinance passed last year, or 2020, two, 2020 um, in which we adopted a two mile radius around the incorporated limits of the city, in which we would have planning and zoning jurisdiction over that, even though it wasn't within the incorporated limits. Not the property, the entire city. If it's not contiguous, I mean, so it doesn't two miles, contiguous. and then we also have to provide city services, services. So there, yes. utilities. Yeah. So but this it would not be city property. No, no. no. correct. It can't, yeah, we cannot, <coughs> we cannot annex unless we border the city limits. Okay, clarifies. But that's, why, that's the reason my statement if this was next to the city limits, right. this is a no brainer, right. <coughs> So in, a, in some places, do you have a drainage sewer system? And I don't know where it goes. I know we used to just build, when I was a kid, dams to catch water that's all going downhill and floats your little homemade boats in it. But 
Um, I think that there's going to be quite a lot of things <coughs> to deal with because you're taking a wet area and not, in allow, not allowing it to drain naturally. So you're going to have increased drainage going downhill towards Lyanna and all the people that live downhill. Um, what's that road? 356. Lyanna Road. Lyanna Road. 356. And 31. So that's it. Thank you very much. Can we address that issue? <coughs> Yeah, sure. So, you know, in areas like this, most of the time what we do is we create a, what we call a stormwater detention basin, uh, which I explained at the last meeting. Uh, but it's, we basically control the outlet, the, the flow of the stormwater after a rain. We control everything that's created by the development. So the roads and the roofs from the homes we store all that in, in the detention basin temporarily and it slowly drains out. So I've designed these basins for years and years for developments just like this and in much, much more challenging areas, dense, denser areas in the city, <coughs> excuse me, where we, where we really have to watch <coughs> for flooding downstream. So uh, this basin will just be mowed. It'll look like, it'll look like green space. It'll look like lawn. Um, but it will be created in a way where it will have a controlled outlet structure. It will have a downstream burn that will allow the natural flow of the water to continue through the property, but in a heavy rain, it will control the excess runoff, if that makes sense. So you will have water pond up behind this berm, and it will slowly release so you don't have the impacts of flooding downstream. Um, but it's all done with, with, with grading. Uh, and it'll look like a natural green space area when it's not raining. And to that point, one of the concerns, again, going back to my previous statement, is if this were to come to fruition, the drainage <laughs> ordinance or the drainage plan would not be adopted by us. It would be county, which has a drainage board. So again, we're talking about an issue that we would ultimately be approving or, or shooting down to which we don't have <coughs> drainage control over which is what we're addressing in the city right now. We're actually trying to adopt a new drainage ordinance because I'm sure many of you drive in the city when it rains and we have a similar issue. So we're, uh, we're undergoing that right now. That would be another concern is obviously with not, us not having control of the property, then we ultimately can't put either less or more stringent drainage requirements on there. So it's just a layer. And drainage utility concerns go in front of the development plan for approval back to APC if this were to pass here. So that's a different part of the process. Right. right. We'll also have to submit a plan to the county soil and water district as well as IDEM because they regulate right. anything right. with stormwater as far as maintaining that quality of stormwater off of a site. There's that's a natural drain in there. That's a that's considered a uh, you know that'll have to be protected with buffers right. uh, on each side of that natural stream and approved again by IDEM. So there's lots of agencies that'll be looking at this as we go through that. Right, and I'm not saying it's process. good, bad, or indifferent. It's just there's so many layers of this yeah. thing that it's with this property being in the proximity that it is, with us having jurisdiction and then the county having jurisdiction, I don't have jurisdiction over just about everything, but neither here nor there, that's just, it adds more layers to it, complicates it. What about the which protects, which protects the people out there? It protects the drainage because like you said, we have to go through so many hoops to get this thing. It does, correct, but I think it goes back to the other concern too, right? It's like it's a double edged sword. You're right, but I also, also think if I have a property out there, who am I voting for that has control over the decision making process? Is it the city, which we're voting today, or the county, which would adopt the drainage plan? So, right. see what I'm saying? Like, it would be sure. if I'm going to the ballot box because I'm, I'm going to have an issue with the frustration, and I only vote on one side of those and not us five, so. Is, is, let me address one thing you said too. Just a second, I'll come to you. Scottsburg does not have a combination of stormwater and sewage. Some municipalities do that, but we do not. We have we have just affluent in our, in our sewer in our wastewater lines. And in fact, we we've, we've lined probably ten to twenty thousand linear feet of those lines. So they can pull. 
So you're saying that storm water goes into the sewer? No, I'm just oh. saying, no, I, you misunderstood. The storm water does not go into our sewer. There are some municipalities that it does, but Scottsburg is not a city that will take the storm water with that, not at all. It's a totally different system. So. What about the traffic? Traffic? Okay, let's let's go forward. We're taking we're taking we want to hear everybody. Yes, go ahead. Mel Beaton Craig. Um, to that end, what you just said. Um, I was gonna say Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm nervous, I'm sorry. What's if, if this is not city property, then presumably we're not getting the city is not getting tax revenues from this right. property, right. the county right. would. What's the benefit to the city of this project? Well the benefit would be Utilities, utilities would be the benefit. And new residents. And new residents that's been inviting into the county. Right, the right. And, and let's face it, we all do our shopping, regardless where we live. In the city of Scottsburg, a lot of us eat and go. I mean, there's money spent in the city. Additional residents. Yes. Okay. That would be there's the, no tax benefits. No, we, we, other we than utilities. Okay. Well, yeah. And I have a, can I ask a question do I still have time for the developer? You said Real, real quick, though, yes. and again, I don't want to get into the weeds because it's going to get over my head. It, I will address the tax because even if it's in the county, the tax base, as far as property tax assessment, is kind of spread out through the county. So not necessarily from the city's perspective. The county it gets into a little bit of a weeds, but there are more, I guess, pros to expanding the tax base than just necessarily collecting property tax revenue or income tax revenue from the residents inside city limits versus outside city And limits. it's good for the, it is good for the county and right. it's good for the, the school right. district. You know, right, right. So, that kind of thing. Um, so you mentioned 60 to 65% green space, but then in kind of in the same, or somebody did, and then you kind of mentioned in the same breath, oh, well we have this retention area that will all be, a lot of trees out there. So how much of that 60 to 65% is in that retention area, and how much is actually going to be spread throughout the properties so that it has trees throughout? Because I'm really concerned with all of this pavement, where right now that's just all open space where rain can come and trees can suck up the water. Sorry, I'm a tree person. So sure. I want to know, are there trees throughout this yeah. property, or is it all going to be concentrated around that retention area <coughs> and on the buffers you're talking about? Sure, yeah, so as part of this package, what we've submitted is, is pretty detailed as far as the layout of the homes on each lot uh, that meet the setbacks from the property lines that allow yard space and green space, as well as dedicated uh, like landscaping easement and buffer areas uh, along the north side specifically, uh, where the single residential family homes will be built to maintain a natural tree buffer the, in that area. Okay, so I, I know that you're planting these houses. Right. And they'll have yards. Right. Are there trees in those yards? Yes. Trees are, no, yeah, we're not going to clear cut. You know. You're not going to clear No, no, we can't clear cut. Can we'll somebody check write that down? I'm going to have him sign it. No. But anyway, no, there'll be trees there. There's a lot of trees. Yeah, we'll take some of them out. We have to put the infrastructure in. Um, can I also ask a quick question on the 18 patio homes? Is that 18 buildings with two units each? Yes. Okay, so it's really 36 residences. Yes. Okay, we'll do it that way. 18 units. Thank you. Just to address the tax issue, if you took a mean of 250,000, I'm, I'm hearing 300,000 homes. These other, just take the time, six of those, $15 million assessed value the county with, not the city, but the county. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, we have our next. Who's next? Please, over here. Hi, uh, Amy Nichols. Amy Nichols, okay. I have just a couple of things. Uh, the nature of the community. We need to consider the nature of the community. We're a farmland community. What is that going to do to the surrounding farms, the congestion and things like that? Also, the crime rate with the additional residents, what will the crime rate be and the policing be like at that point? What's the ratio? I'd like to have something. Property values. What's going to happen to our property values? We all live here. We've moved into the community that we're in because it's 
a farm community. It's you got quite a few, few people who own more than 30 acres, I'm sure. So what are we going to do with the property values? Have we, anybody assessed that? Do we have any findings of what that's going to do to our values? My daughters also go to the school, so I'm a little bit concerned about what's going to happen at the school. Thank you, Miss Amy. Do you have anything else? No, I just wanted to see if anybody had any answers. Yes. Thank you. No answers. <laughs> Who's next? Who would like to speak next? Here? Yes. Um, my name is Rose Paskey, and um, I had a question about Mr. what Mr. Mills said. Is there going to be an absolute guarantee that there's no subsidized housing in this development? Because, and, I, and the reason I say that is that 30 years ago on the 19th of May, I moved here specifically uh, to Vienna because it was a, an agricultural community. Because I came from the East Coast, largest city on the East Coast, and I came here to be in a small community and, um, and to have nice neighbors, which we do. So I'm very concerned about subsidized housing and, and increased crime rate. There is no subsidized stuff that I'll know. You know, and, and the whole plan that the attorney, you know, put all that, that's all the details obviously are, are in there, but the answer is no. You know, there's, that's, these type of properties are not, uh, just, you know, it's not. So. But anyway, all the details are in the, in the, in the whole presentation. But you can't, but not chapter, mm -hmm. chapter eight, eight is it? Housing? We want to sell houses, 280,000, 290. We, you know, that's how much the house costs. Well, the, the duplex is rent. No, the duplex, <coughs> they're, 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 they're the same way. If we would sell one half, it would be right at you know, probably 250 or 270. They're just one half. But you're not selling, but you're not selling, we're, we're but we're those, but you're not selling that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, if I rent, if I would sell, I can. If we, if, if we did sell, I'm just telling you the value of it. There, and in the presentation, you can see the pictures of it in the square feet. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I'm not really throwing old rocks off anybody, but this, you know, or any other, so these are not uh, cheap built properties that are not, they're going to be, you know, up or in, I guess. I don't use that word either. You guys are guaranteeing market right and above. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want, yeah, I don't want to sound like, hey, it's, you know, Todd Hall or something, but they're going to be very, uh, a lot higher end than, than, than a lot of some of the areas somebody went through. Well, know. I used to be a landlord, and I was told you can't deny Chapter 8. Uh, no, that's, actually, that's, 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 but, uh, but our prices, the, you still got to pay the land. Thank, thank you. Let's, let's go on to the next. Who's that? Sure. Yes, sure. Yes, please. What's your name, huh? My name's Robin Smith. Robin Smith, mm -hmm. okay. And we own the 10 acres that are at the north side of this property. So the whole north side of the, we own, we buy that project next to it. So the single family homes are going to be towards the front part of the property. There he said, I think a 12 foot buffer, correct, with trees. Our barn is right up next to the property line, basically. So there's going to be several lots of these single family homes. So when they open their door to look in their backyard, they're going to see the side of our barn, which is a two story barn. It's a nice barn, we like our barn, but I'm sure they will not. <laughs> they will not like opening their door to see the back of our barn. Um, so I really just kind of a little bit concerned about that. We also have animals in our barn, we have a tractor in our barn, we have a working farm going on. You know, and are these people that are moving in, I mean they may want to be moving to the country, but are they really ready for the country? <laughs> you know what I mean? Are they going to want to hear our chickens, you know, early in the morning? Crowing, or they want to hear the tractor going at 6 a.m. Do they want to smell your manure? That's right. Yeah. Um, we have bees also. We have 11 hives. Um, we have honey. Um, we sell at the farmer's markets. You know, we like to do all this stuff. We like the way our life is. We like to have an agricultural life. You know, and like I said, a lot of these people are going to think, oh, I want to move to the country. But do they really know the country is like? They don't want to live beside that. I mean, that's going to change the way we live or cause turmoil between us and our new neighbors. You know? I mean, it's also, as far as the drainage, we are north of the property, but all the water drains north. So all the water off this property is going to drain onto us first. Mm -hmm. 
Now there's three major areas where water drains on. Up at the road, at Vianna Road, right at the corner, water drains onto our property. Also midway back, there's an underground stream. And there's sinkholes back there, which continue onto their property. So they're gonna have a lot of sinkholes through there. I don't know what that's gonna do to their houses in the future. I don't know, but there is a lot of sinkholes through there. And there's an underground stream. On back is where they wanna do the water retention pond. And there's drainage back there too. And I believe on back, past our property, on this gentleman's property, there is a watershed <coughs> going on back. Um, but you know, where are we gonna do with the water? Through the middle of our property that comes off it. And the front of the property. You know, we have the retaining pond in the back of the property, which is a lot of water there too, but it's just, there's just a lot of questions, you know, and there's not going to be as much green space, like everyone was saying, you know, there's going to be a lot of concrete, there's going to be a lot of roads, a lot of houses, so the water right now goes into the ground and it soaks up slowly, you know, what's going to happen later, and how are we going to stop, you know, as far as the underground stream? I mean, will that be cut off so it won't be going through our property anymore if they're going to redirect it to the back, or... How will that happen? And there's a big dip. The land is not flat. Halfway back, there's a huge dip. It looks like it from the road that's flat, but it's not. There's a huge dip you could drive a school bus into, and you wouldn't see the school bus anymore. And then it comes back up. So a lot of these houses, you know, will be going down in this dip, or are they going to level it all out? You know, make it like a retaining wall. I don't know. I'd love to do a walking tour with you guys when I'm on the property line. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. We'd like to address those setbacks mm -hmm. or with the engineer. Okay. Yeah, those, those single situation. family homes at the north side Along of the way. subdivision that would border their property, they're 140 feet in length. Uh, it's a 25 foot setback for the home. So those homes aren't going to be sitting right on the property and there's plenty of space there. You're, you're probably going to have a 60 to 70 foot yes. backyard plus a 12 foot natural uh, tree buffer in the back. So. 25 plus 12, or is that 12 in the 25? It's 12 foot of just neutral area, just that's nothing. Then you have the, the lot from the house, I don't see it in the end, where he's 60 to 70 feet from the back door to the end of their property. You know, they have another few feet to their barn, and it's a good distance there. You know, you don't have any distance. Okay, right here. Uh, my name's Norma Cornett, and I own the property. Uh, of their property. I have 93 acres there, 65 acres or till. The back floods, it gets very wet back in the back. If you guys want to come out, I'll take you back there and let, let you look at it. But I've lost part of the creek that comes down because of the flooding. Um, me personally, I don't believe for a minute that the homes you're wanting to sell, anyone would want to drive through storage units to get to their home, especially a two to three hundred thousand dollar home. <coughs> and I don't believe for a minute that, and I don't mean to make you, I, I, that these are not going to be rental properties because they're not. Well. It's, it's I, the, I don't believe that, and I'd like to. I'd like to know who's funding this. Are, is it federally funded? Do you have other partners? Do you uh, have other facilities? Do you have other places like this in other parts of the Kentucky or Indiana? This is your first. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. This. I understand your guys' concern, and it's it's right to ask questions. However, we are here to rezone, approve a rezone from AG to PUD. So, as far as those questions are concerned, I'm not going to say they're off limits. You can certainly ask these guys if you guys want to answer. But I don't know that this is the form. Exactly. Not in this form. Address it. But I, I but in, in to, to clarify, I know there's probably some frustration in this room because there are a lot of questions, a lot of valid questions. And we don't have answers. The reason we don't have answers is what I alluded to earlier. A lot of it's without our control. We talked about drainage, a lot <coughs> about drainage. Again, that will go to the county drainage board. We do not have a drainage board in the city, nor do we have jurisdiction over the property. So I understand the frustration. I feel the frustration because I'm equally as frustrated because of the issue with where it's located. And again, I'm not going to say it's a good, good project or not. But again, that's that layer that we're talking about, is we ultimately don't have much control other than voting on this rezone, and after that, you guys are county residents again. So that's just, 
I, I would just like to say I've lived on my home for 47 years. Raised a daughter, raised a granddaughter. And I cannot imagine that next door to me. Because, and, and from what I've heard, it's going to be the biggest what's it? subdivision <laughs> in the county. And of all places to put it, in the middle of a little small Mayberry town, <laughs> I, I just really upsets me. And and I don't, I would like to know about sidewalks. Just one road in bothers me because I hear more tires squealing when I'm open in the shop. People slowing down and screaming at each other, and it's horrible. The traffic on our road is horrible, and they speed in that 30 and 40 mile. It's useless. <laughs> so, you know, it really is. And sidewalks are required in our subdivision control ordinance. Thank you. <clears throat> this is, uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's 80 some odd <coughs> miles in the south of right now. So, I mean, this subdivision is not <coughs> one Jan, I, I, Jan, go right ahead. Jan Larson, uh, I, like I said, I've owned the property just north of there. Uh, my main question is, is, is I understand it, that the county commissioners have nothing to say about this once you vote on it. Is that correct? They don't have to meet the board. And going back to the drainage, an old geologist years ago informed me that that's glacier tilt. When I put it in my basement, I got some beautiful boulders that I know came from Michigan and uh, from the Iron Country. Uh, there's a sand vein that she talks about in the sinkhole. Because all that water drainage comes down across me and makes it a whole lot wider. So there's, there's, uh, this is not standard soil. <coughs> this is glacier till. And you're liable to have quicksand or you're liable to have total clay. So, you know, that's something that they, somebody needs to look into. But I'm more concerned about the, anything that the commissioners can say or do to forward this or stop it. What's at the bottom of the sinkhole? Huh? What's at the bottom of the sinkhole? Sinkhole without putting in wells when I was a kid, usually uh, sand. And you'll have you'll have quicksand down about 18 <coughs> foot, 25 foot in this area. We have water. <laughs> yes, please stand up. Listen. What is your state your name, please? My name is Doris Carr.
And one of the guys at the other council said he knew about this. He's a liar. He wasn't known to know this. <laughs> See, they're laughing. They know I'm telling you the truth. These people got very sick from this. Pay attention. Thank you, sir. Who's next? Yes, ma'am. Our well was contaminated, and we had to go on city water. <coughs> There's a well right next to our place also. My name's Daniel Smith, by the way. I'm Bob's husband. We live there on the north side. Um, there's a well right next to us. Uh, Lawrence Palmer is the guy who owns the house next to us. It used to be part of our property. It was a parsonage, and now it's his house. But uh, he has a well that can be tested uh, to see if there is still uh, contamination in that water. Also, something uh, off that subject, the ag agricultural part of it you guys were talking about. Um, a couple of years ago, I wanted to get into rabbits, and I went out to Slide Road and bought some rabbits off a guy who had to sell all of his rabbits because a zoning committee came by, just drove by his house and rezoned his house without him knowing it. I don't know if he had the opportunity to find out, but told him that he could rezone it back to agriculture if he wanted to cost him $10,000. What's the chances of them doing that to us? Because we are agricultural, and I, as most people here know that we farm on our property. It's an active farm. We have Basically, bees are, are considered livestock. So we have lots of livestock on our property, lots of chickens and everything else. What's the chances of them just driving by rezoning us and saying, hey, well, if you want to keep doing your chicken business, then you have to pay us $10,000 to rezone your property. Probably more because we have more property. It was just a small place that was in a residential area. And I'm, I'm concerned that, uh, and I know the city council doesn't have any power over that, but you might have knowledge that, that might help with the, uh, at least our comfort in this uh, whole decision. Uh, what ramifications it could have on us in the future as far as our agricultural business goes. Is it okay if I check this one? Yeah. Okay, so city council does have a little bit of power over that actually. So first of all, if they wanted to rezone your land, you would get a public notice about it, just like you have for these meetings. Um, but this is a rezone hearing here, what we're doing. So at the end of the day, um, if this were to happen again and say that if someone wanted to rezone your land or the city wanted to, they would first go through APC, you all would get notified like you did there, and then the APC would make a recommendation to council, which is why we're here tonight. So the same process would go on, you all would also get notifications. Correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but we've, yeah. You're right. okay. But it's totally <laughs> possible that just because they rezone that to residential, that eventually they're going to want to expand the residential area there and make that whole uh, uh, Viana, uh, just a giant residential area, and, and, and just do away with the agricultural. Typically, a property aspect. owner applies for rezoning, not a government. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think I, I, since I, I cannot think of a time that we have sought a rezone as a city entity. Uh, let's, Jana has right over this one, young lady here. What is your name, please? Me. Yes. Oh, Mary Jane McGarvey. Technically, I'm not a resident. I am a property owner. I have a vested interest. My family's been here for generations. But I just have some questions. So I understand it's our duty. Do we have a housing crisis in Scott County? Do we need more houses? Just a question. We're building 250 homes right now. Okay. There's been, there's been uh, 117 sold since I've come in office. About <coughs> what's been the price point on those? 175 to 300. Okay. So I just, I wondered because the median income in Scott County is 45,000. So the average Scott County resident cannot afford these. So my question to the developers is if you guys, you know, you're talking about building a couple at a time, if you can't sell these, what's the plan? Because I'm, I'm also asking this because we had this fringe question, and that's what got us here. I don't want their not being able to sell stuff to get us in another sticky situation. So I'm just trying to understand. Right. Well, I mean, you know, with any no spec house or this stuff like this, there was always any business risk, you know. But uh, we know enough about real estate, and, and from our opinion, that we obviously wouldn't be trying to make this commitment um, that the demand is there and it will work, you know. If it didn't have, the, you know, didn't feel that way, we definitely wouldn't take that risk or put ourselves up like that. But we, we definitely know that, uh, you know, it's there and it will continue to be there. So that's, and for our study, for our study, our opinion, that's what we believe. At 200,000, 45, that, that is totally didn't buy a house. Any 
Anything else? <coughs> Got one more question. Okay, yes, I'm sorry, Jane, go ahead, buddy. Uh, nobody answered about the commissioner, but I do know the commissioners on a development like this have a bond that they, the company has to put up to make sure that everything they say they're going to do gets done. I didn't know whether the city had talked about doing that to guarantee some of us people that the, the sidewalks will go in, the roads will be blacktop, the trees will be planted. Josh, I'll let you handle that. There is a bond requirement. I'm trying to look right now to tell you how much it is, but there is a requirement. And so the county has nothing, the commissioners have nothing to say about this. I mean, they don't have put in two cents or anything. Yeah, uh, the commissioner's two cents, if you will, would come from they have two appointed members to the advisory plan commission. So that's where they would be able to kind of right. pull their way if they want right. to. <coughs> Sorry, yes, go ahead. What is your name, please? My name is Sunday Broadus Pruitt. I am Sunday with Pruitt. Diana Fire Department. Have you guys considered uh, what this is going to do to a volunteer fire department, let alone our EMS, uh, who struggles a lot of times to have enough employees, and to our county sheriff's department? Is anybody taking that into consideration? Because you're going to add another, let's see, you're looking at 60 houses, probably another three or 400 people into there, which we struggle now to have enough members of our <coughs> volunteer fire department to make the runs that we have. So has anybody considered any of that? Because now it becomes the wellness of our community as far as their health and their fire coverage. Thank you. Next. Yes, just a quick follow-up to Dan's point. I'm afraid you're going to set precedent. And by lowering the requirement of zoning up, you know, two miles from the city, someone next to it says, hey, we want to do that too. We want to put in 50 houses on 20 acres, or whatever it may be, because they did it. I mean, it would be an awfully good argument for someone else just to continue that. It's just not a good, not a good feeling. Thank you. Next, yes. So, following the news, you get pretty nervous looking at, you know, budgets and the debits and the, what's going to happen to a national financial plan, which all of it, of course, affects loan, interest loan, interest rates, you know, uh, availability of money. I just, what happens to this area if this development is not successful? Who bites, who gets the hurt as far as expenses? Or will there be taxes raised to cover expenses that the city or the county have put no, out? No, whoever they would, if they would borrow, if they borrow money, we don't know if they're going to pay for it, just borrow would be the bank. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Okay. Who else? Mr. Yes? Mayor, I started this, and, and I'd just like to say that I asked a question, and uh, I didn't get a bedlam of answers, and I didn't even get an answer. Nobody has told me how this helps Diana. But all I've heard are concerns. And I don't want to kick a dead horse, but this horse is very alive. How does this help Diana? I'm like, well, we're not here to answer, we're here to listen. <coughs> and okay, to but, but Mr. Mills, and it says, I believe, in, mm. when I read this, it says that it has, doesn't have to, but it should enhance the character and it should bring value to the community. That's all I'm asking. I just want to know what value is coming to my community. Simple question. We've heard all the negatives. <coughs> I just want one positive. Well, I can tell you. In my experience is when you when you put 15 million assessed value in there, everybody's house is going to go up. But I had three realtors over the weekend talk to me about my house, sir. It went down. Maybe they don't know what they're talking about. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But you, sir, have given me one thing. Can you give me one? Okay. You talk to me and tell me. Yes. 
are we ready? Because I think everybody spoke multiple times. Yeah, I think so. So, I mean, we, you know, we, at this point, I think the council needs to disclose, disclose, so close the open session and that way we can decide and make our decision. Okay. Could I ask this? The traffic problem is going to be bad. Are you all, who's going to handle the traffic? Yeah, we, we're, this is the, we're going to close it up. That's in dot. NDOT handles all it. They're coming right off the highway and it's NDOT's issue. It's the state issue. issue. Huh? It's the state. It's, it's, it's NDOT. It's Indiana Department of Transportation. That's, they're going to handle all that. So, that's it. One question. Yes, to the developer. If you don't build houses there, it's zoned agricultural, right? Yes, sir. Would you like a home processing plant be put in there? To Generate the that'd be in the area. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just yeah. quite, just. Oh, yeah. Good no, point. No, no, no. question. They would have to come and seek industrial. Yeah. Let me say thank you for telling us your concerns, uh, your your interest in these things. So it's been very helpful to the councils to try to, to try to make decisions in these areas. So. Uh, um, well, that's it. Ordinance 2023 15 is before us. There's uh, a motion to uh, go forward with Ordinance 2023 15 on first reading only. We have to make a motion to get to a vote, regardless. So I'll make the motion so we get to the vote. Christian Evans makes the motion to go forward with Ordinance 2023 15. In uh, here, is there a second? I'll second. So should we get to the vote? Chris Albertson seconds this. Any questions, comments, concerns? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. To, uh, to, to get the to vote. Get, this no, is not for the vote, correct? That's what, that the was the vote. Approved right now. This is a motion to approve. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a motion to approve, right? Yes. Yeah. We've Let's approved. make sure we. We understand. We have a we have a motion. We have a vote in a second. So, we're so voting. now we're now voting. Vote. So go ahead. Call the vote. So on motion on ordinance 2023-15. We have a motion to go forward. And all in favor say aye. All opposed say aye. 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 Yeah, they should provide a process for us to have a vote. You could have had a family forum 
them in my front yard. We so, no. so we need to we need to move our council meeting on. I I, I understand. I wanted to yes. give you a yes. So, so there's frustration. I understand this whole thing that puts you guys in a bad situation, yeah. and I understand that. But we'll we'll talk about nobody's the in body. charge of 100. percent Well, exactly. Exactly. And yeah. that's, that's, that's kind of yeah. where yeah. I am. That's you know, before before since since I'm not. I'm not elected by these folks before this, but I could, in good conscience, vote to approve it. It'd it have to be kind of a kind of a slam dunk situation. But I, I, I understand your concern, and I understand their concern. But so we, we, we have a process problem we need to work <coughs> and, 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 and you got caught in something that was never an intention. I mean, you yeah, know, because, we, because we spent all this money I, and you've done everything according to you all's plan. Everything's according to the plan. We've got lawyers. We've got everything this man over here. This is a pro from top to bottom, regardless of what these people think. And this man knows what he's talking about. He does this for a living, okay? The bottom line of it is if we come in here with a plan according to your comprehensive plan, screaming, we want houses, we want growth, we want tired of our kids moving to, to a Sellersburg or a Charlestown or moving to Indianapolis or over to where you get Y'all got 1% one, 1 growth here in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. There's no housing here for these kids, man. I'm telling you. They're starving to death for it. You want jobs to come in here. You're going to have to work with developers like us to bring in infrastructure in here and keep your young people here. If not, you're a dying community. Okay. I, I wholeheartedly agree, and I will say this because we do need to move on. Your your project is a great project. Sure it is. It's an absolutely great project. I don't care what anybody says. Mm -hmm. If this is in the city limits, I'll, I'll do flips, jump up and down, and see whatever anything can do because we have control over that. And I agree. It's well, not your fault. It's not these folks' fault. We have to take ownership of the process. We, we, have, we, there's a we have to take ownership of the process. And I, every point you made, because the market, the, 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 the rate that you're looking at is exactly what's missing in Scott. It has been for quite some time. And that's the only issue if it was two miles, yeah, whichever direction, if, but the city. If it was right on the city board, yeah. it would have been a
necessary or even appropriate for us to have that request for closing the streets all around the square for Saturday. We're considering perhaps amending that request to only closing Wardell Street so we can still have some things in the street, have some uh, place for some safety for folks to pass back and forth as things happen. Uh, I'm not sure that we, I'd like to have one more meeting. I'd like to then make that formal request at the next meeting after we talk to some of the downtown business folks and just see what their thoughts are you know, about those changes as we make that. But other than that, things are going really, really well. I continue to get calls from folks from, I think we're up to 10 states now that folks are coming to town from. Uh, and so that, that's very exciting. And uh, all the rest of the uh, logistics seem to be coming together very well. Jill and the city team are working really, really hard, as well as some folks from the county to, to make all that stuff happen. Can you, can you explain to the folks, I mean, just who's coming, some of the, some of the stars that were from Mayberry? Well, Andy Griffith's daughter will be here. Don Knotts' daughter will be here. Uh, a gentleman named Dennis Rush, who played Opie's buddy Howie Pruitt in about 10 episodes. Everybody probably remembers Howie Pruitt. He did the newspaper with Opie, and uh, Opie sold his bicycle to him back in the way. He'll be here. A lady named Margaret Carey, who uh, was in two episodes of The Andy Griffith Show, but she's best known as being Disney's figure model for Tinkerbell. And that, uh, the Tinkerbell, the Peter Pan movie is celebrating its 75th anniversary this year. So she'll be here to help celebrate Disney and the Andy Griffith Show. Uh, I could go on. We've got nine different people who are either on the Andy Griffith Show or have, are related to the Andy Griffith Show that will be here joining us. And I think it's 13 people who will come dressed up as characters from the show uh, who weren't actually on the show, will be portraying people like Floyd the Barber, Otis Campbell, the town drunk, Ernest T. Bass, the crazy guy from the hills. And which reminds me, the one guy that I should be mentioning too, Rodney Dillard, who was the guitar playing darling boy, that crazy band of hillbillies that came down out of the hills <laughs> to uh, play bluegrass music. He's the last one living, still touring, and he'll be here with his band, and he'll be doing a concert Saturday afternoon. And that's a big, he's a Grammy nominee, member of three halls of fame, a uh, very, very influential musician, and he'll be here as well. Can you tell us the dates? The, the, the entire weekend of June the 23rd to the 25th will have activities starting on Friday night with a celebrity meet and greet dinner, auction, entertainment, etc. Big, big night Friday night. All day Saturday, and then most of the day Sunday till about four o'clock Sunday, June twenty-fifth. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Jill, what else do we have for tonight? We need to meet real quick to try to schedule out some times for budget. Okay. We need budget workshops for the city. Okay. Um, um, <coughs> Treasurer, what, when do you want to try to get that done by? We need to just we want to stick around after the meeting, try to coordinate schedules. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a lot of vacations in June. Right. Last year we met early, so I just need to try to coordinate to see what council's wishes really are. Okay. Can, can we do that, guys? Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I need a motion to adjourn. I got that. Motion to adjourn. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much.